This was essentially an Iranian attack on Israel through its instrumentality, the terrorist group Hamas, that Iran has armed, equipped, trained, financed, and directed for many years now. This morning, the Times reported that the U.S. president has now urged Israel not to repeat the mistakes they made after 9-11, but also endorsed a ground offensive. Well, let's get the perspective of John Bolton, former U.S. national security advisor under President Trump and former U.S. ambassador. Ambassador uh, to the UN. Um, welcome, John. Um, firstly, your old boss, I think, said yesterday uh, of the war in Israel, uh, much like his view on Ukraine, that it wouldn't have happened if he was around in the White House. Uh, do you agree on that? Well, no, no one can say, obviously, but it's typical Trump uh, faced with this uh, horrible terrorist attack and uh, unknown implications uh, regionally and globally, the first thing he thinks about is himself. But are there policies, perhaps, that he's referring to that would have prevented uh, what's happened and the escalation that we're currently witnessing in your term? Well, I don't think there's any way to know, uh, in part because he didn't carry out policies. He doesn't think in policy terms. He doesn't have a philosophy. He makes ad hoc decisions. Remember, he came within an inch of meeting with the Iranian foreign minister at that time, Javed Zarif, uh, in uh, the summer of 2019 at the Biarritz G7 summit. So maybe he could have made the deal of the century with Javed Zarif. Uh, that, that's why it's hard to predict or, or equally hard to disprove assertions by Trump of what would have happened had he been reelected. Mm. So let's talk about the situation we find ourselves in now. Um, and I suppose I want to ask whether you think proportionality in war matters. Is there such a thing? I mean, has Israel so far been proportional, turning off the water supply, electricity, fuel, only allowing aid in almost two weeks later? Do we have a misguided idea of what war means? Well, it depends on what you define as proportionality. In, in the law of war, proportionality uh, says that when you have a military target, and military targets are the only legitimate targets, civilian targets are never legitimate, but if you have a military target, is its military significance greater than the potential damage and casualties that might be inflicted on civilians? It's not a rule that says that you only have to respond in an equivalent way uh, when you've been attacked. So uh, since Hamas has made uh, almost the entire Gaza Strip uh, in into their base for attacking Israel, uh, it it's pretty hard to say what proportionality means. What you can say for sure is this, when a country is attacked, uh, as Israel certainly was on October the 7th, uh, the country in the legitimate exercise of its self-defense is not obligated merely to respond at the same level that the attack occurred. It is entitled to eliminate the threat. Uh, that's what the United States did when we were bombed at Pearl Harbor uh, on December the 7th, 1941. We didn't respond proportionally by destroying an equivalent number of Japanese vessels. Uh, we fought a war and dropped atomic bombs on Japan to bring that war to an end to eliminate the threat. There's no Japanese threat anymore. And by the way, the allies in Europe did the same thing to Germany. So so that that I think people need to take into account. I, I can't forecast what the Israelis are about to do, but make no mistake, they are entitled to eliminate the threat. So you're saying that, that, that one of the greatest crimes or perceived in many areas as one of the greatest crimes against humanity committed, one of, I, I'm saying, not, not the only one or the top one, uh, you know, which was that the bombings in Japan is actually, you know, a, a, a tangible and, and acceptable reaction in order to close a war or end a war. A hundred percent I do. A hundred percent I do. It was the most moral decision that an American president could make to spare additional American lives and to spare Japanese lives. The two atomic bombs brought the war to a much more rapid conclusion than otherwise would have been the case. Uh, and they were dropped on military targets. Both Hiroshima and Nagasaki were legitimate military targets. And, and the civilian deaths, tragic though they might have been, were part of legitimate warfare. That's the way it works. The terrorists cannot hide behind human shields and expect immunity from reprisal. 
But I'm presuming you're not recommending annihilating Gaza or dropping a, a similarly, um, you know, devastating bomb. I, I'm trying to respond to this word proportionality, which translated means Israel does nothing. That That's what opponents of Israel really mean. Mm. Mm. Um, and in terms of, of, of Joe Biden, President Joe Biden's uh, visit, uh, would you say that that it's it's been successful? I mean, we had a correspondent on earlier who was talking about a, a slight lethargy amongst Israelis themselves at this procession of of leaders, some of whom uh, they don't consider uh, very influential at all. That that was what he said about uh, the British prime minister, but but not about Joe Biden. And, and Joe Biden does seem to have managed at least to get this Rafa a gate opened. Uh, but in terms of what you're saying, perhaps that's just delaying the inevitable of a, a sort of wipe out ground offensive. Well, I, I don't know what kind of ground offensive it will be, but but explain to me what Israel's supposed to do other than sit there uh, and suffer continued terrorist attacks if it doesn't respond. You know, I don't have the text in front of me now, but in World War II, Mahatma Gandhi famously said to the British, don't fight a Nazi invasion. Because you'll just you'll just do great damage to the country. Is that what Israel's supposed to do? Just sit there and get attacked by these barbarians over and over again? Is that what you recommend? And in terms of the the the, the sort of clear concern from so many world leaders about an escalation uh, in, in what's happening, you know, it feels very much like the world's on a on a knife edge right now. Iran's a, a, a big concern, and and I suppose Russia are benefiting from 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 this as well. I mean, in the context of it creating greater global disturbance, uh, does that um, does that invite a degree of what the word you don't like, but proportionality. I, I don't know. Should Britain have intervened to defend France after the Nazi uh, blitzkrieg uh, cut through uh, Be Belgium in, in 1939 because that would spread the war? Oh, my goodness, a wider war. You know, s somebody's got to acknowledge that Israel was sitting there and suffered this horrible attack. Uh, and is now expected to give Hamas essentially a free pass because they're a bunch of barbarians. Uh, moreover, I think it's very important when people talk about a wider war to understand the war is very wide right now. I think this was essentially an Iranian attack on Israel through its instrumentality, the terrorist group Hamas, that Iran has armed, equipped, trained, financed, and directed for many years now. Uh, in, in ways that uh, that what it's done with Hezbollah are even more significant to create what the now departed Qasem Soleimani had a Quds force once called the Ring of Fire around Israel. Uh, we don't know that that's the strategy that uh, Iran has in mind here, but the notion that somehow this is a little isolated conflict on the borders of the Gaza Strip uh, and doesn't involve strategic implications for the region as a whole, we are well past that point. And do you think just finally that those Hamas uh, uh, terrorist attacks um, are an example of Israel's policy toward Gaza over the last 15 years being a failure? Well, that depends on whether you think killing innocent civilians is ever justified. If you if you think that that's a legitimate reaction to whatever Israel has done, uh, you know, then then I think that says something about the, the, the position that you're taking. The fact is that uh, uh, the rest of the Middle East has weaponized the Palestinian people against Israel for, for decades. And, and the proof that that policy has failed is that neither Egypt nor Jordan will take any refugees from Gaza. Uh, mm. So it's not that's not a creation by Israel. They have not been in the Gaza Strip since 2007. Mm. Thank you uh, so much for your thoughts, John Bolton, former U.S. National Security Advisor under President Trump and Ambassador to the U.N.